Here's a solid mechanics question which deals with the idea of indeterminate beams. So what an indeterminate beam is, is a beam which has too many reaction forces to calculate with uh, or to determine from first principles. So essentially, if you have a beam which is fixed at one end, so you know, you essentially have a cantilever beam here, you have two reaction forces if you don't have anything going on horizontally so you have a reaction moment and a reactive shear force and you also have a react a reaction or reactive shear force here so that's going to be vr it's called vr2 and this is going to be vr1 so you have three different unknowns but you only have two equations so those equations are that sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero and the sum of moments about any point uh, has to be equal to zero. So those are your two equations, but they're not enough to actually find three unknowns. And this is what an indeterminate beam is. And this is the kind of question that you would see in your solid mechanics module, whether you're doing civil engineering or aerospace or mechanical. And if you'd like to see anything similar to this on the channel, let me know in the comments. So to be able to solve this, you need something more than just uh, Newton's second law, basically, which is you need to look at the deflection of the beam as well. So in this case, we have a few boundary conditions that we have to consider. So we have a few boundary conditions, but before we can use them, we have to find the moment the bending moment is a function of x right and those boundary conditions are the following so the deflection at the root is equal to zero because the beam is fixed also the deflection at l is equal to zero because that's where the beam is uh, simply supported and also the slope at the root is equal to zero because the fact that it's a cantilever beam or the fact that this is a fixed support it doesn't allow the beam to rotate. So um, locally, the, um, the beam will be flat at the root. So the shape, um, when this deforms, it, can, it could look something like this perhaps, right? So however the beam deforms, the slope here will be, uh, will be zero. And that's one of our boundary conditions. So, the first thing to do is to find, we can't actually calculate those reactions, but we can um, find an expression, we can eliminate some unknowns at least. So let's try to do that. So I'm gonna redraw the beam and I'm gonna draw the reactions. So we have one point load here, that's F, and then we have another, we have, we have one reaction here, which is this, this is let's call it R2 and I'm going to change the names just to use uh, fewer letters basically so we have R2 here we have let's say R1 and we have a bending moment here which is MR right and then we have this is L and this is L so what we can do is first of all we say that R1 plus R2 minus f is equal to zero those are the forces acting in the y direction and now let's take uh, let's take moments about this point here that this point is called doesn't really have a name we can call it p so we can say that the sum of moments about point p is equal to zero and we consider counterclockwise to be our positive direction so about point p we've got a couple of things that produce moments first of all we have this which is we, which we drew as clockwise so we're going to call it minus mr and then r1 isn't producing anything about point p then we have plus r2 times l so r2 is producing a counterclockwise moment and then we have minus f times 2l because f is producing a clockwise moment so that's equal to zero so those are our two equations which we can't yet solve so let's leave them as they are for now or maybe we can rewrite the first one as so the first one being this one we can maybe rewrite it as 
r1 plus r2 is equal to f and we can rewrite the second one as let's see so r2l minus mr is equal to 2fl just to keep the unknowns on one side and the force f which is supposedly known on the other side so let's move on and try to find mx let's try to find the bending moment so to find the bending moment um, we're gonna prepare for applying macaulay's method which is we're going to take a section close to the end of the beam to include all the forces that are acting on the beam and this is what we're going to end up with so i'm going to draw a free body diagram just of that particular section so that's going to be r2 which is acting somewhere here and then we have r1 which is acting here and then we have this moment mr which is acting here and then we have l and then we have x right so i'm not looking at the whole beam i'm just looking at basically this section here which has an arbitrary length that we call x which means that this part is going to be x minus l so that's going to give us a shear force on this section as well as a bending moment mx and this is the bending moment that we're trying to extract from the beam and we're going to take moments again so we're going to take moments about this point which we call p again but it's a different point p so we say that sum of moments about point p is equal to zero counterclockwise is positive and let's see what we get of course we take moments about this point just to cancel the moment due to this unknown shear force okay so we've got minus mr yeah we start from the left and then we have r1 produces a clockwise moment so that's minus r1 times x and then we have this here which is also clockwise so minus r2 times x minus l and then plus mx equals zero and that's it so it's a relatively straightforward expression for the bending moment so mx is going to be mr plus r1 times x r1 times x plus r2 times x minus l so this here is the bending moment which that's the correct expression for the bending moment but it's only for this part of the beam because that's that's how we draw our free body diagram now if we want to make this applicable for the whole beam we have to uh, use that uh, sharp bracket function so we're going to say that mx is going to be equal to mr times and then this is going to be x minus zero to the power zero right which is saying that this uh this reaction happens at x equals zero and then plus r1 times again x minus zero to the power one plus r2 x minus l to the power one so now it's time to change this into the general expression which is i think i should use another letter but um i'll i'll keep using mx so that's going to be mr x minus zero to the power zero plus r1 x minus zero to the power one plus r2 x minus l to the power one so this now works for every position along the beam now instead of the moment i'm actually going to replace this with young's modulus times the second moment of area times v double dash okay so if we read the question again uh we're going to see that we don't really know much in terms of uh the second moment of area or the young's modulus so those are probably not things that we're going to need so let's try to integrate this and then we can apply the boundary conditions so if we integrate this once we're going to get an equation for the slope right so that's going to be mr times x minus zero to the power one plus r one x minus zero squared over two 
plus r2 and this is x minus l squared over 2 plus c1 that's the first constant of integration and then we do this again so we have e times i times v so now we get the actual displacement that's going to be mr times x minus 0 r squared over 2 plus and then we have r1 x minus 0 cubed over 6 plus r2 x minus l cubed over 6 then we have to integrate c1 of course so that's plus c1x plus c2 every time we integrate in in an indefinite fashion we get another constant of integration so now let's try to apply those boundary conditions so the first one that we said we have is this so v at 0 is equal to 0 and this is our expression for v right so if we replace v with 0 we're going to get the following so 0 equals uh, then we replace x with 0 and if we replace x with 0 this cancels this cancels this cancels because it's the sharp bracket function uh, this cancels and which you just get 0 is equal to c2 so that's your uh, constant c2 which is nice we we got rid of uh, one constant straight away now the other expression that we're going to use is this one so that's v prime of 0 is equal to 0 so for that we're going to use the expression for the slope which is this uh, second from the bottom equation so we replace v prime with 0 and we replace x with 0 as well so uh, this is going to be so this first term vanishes uh, this vanishes this vanishes and you just get uh, 0 is equal to c1 so we found we conveniently we conveniently found out that the two constants of integration are uh, are both zero so what we then have is that e times i times uh, v is equal to the moment so mr multiplied with x minus zero and then squared over two and then plus r1 and then x minus zero cubed over six plus r2 and then x minus l cubed over 6. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the final boundary condition which is that v at l is equal to 0. Right, so it was actually easier to use those two boundary conditions first because uh, they would tell us instantly that c1 and c2 are 0 and we can cancel them out. Um, you don't have to do, do it in this order, you can use this first if you want, but it's going to take a bit more time and you're going to end up with the same result anyway, if you do it correctly. So, if we apply this boundary condition, all we have to do is just replace x with l, so mv with 0. So, this is going to be 0 equals mr. So, we replace, we said we replace x with l, so that's going to be l squared over 2, plus r1, and this is going to be l cubed over 6 and this is just going to be 0 it's going to be l minus l right and this is our third equation and using this um, this equation we can find all uh, reactions all the both reaction forces and the reaction moment so let's write everything again but actually I think we can simplify this slightly so the 2 and the 6 uh, so the 2 goes with the 2 so we have a 3 here and then the l squared and the cube cancel out so this actually simplifies slightly into mr plus r1 l over 3 equals to 0 so that's the third equation so we have mr plus r1 l over 3 is equal to 0 and then we also have that r1 plus r2 is equal to f so r1 plus r2 is equal to f and finally we have r2l minus mr 
so r to l minus m r is equal to 2fl so just as a reminder this equation is derived from the newton second law for the vertical forces this is derived from the newton second law for uh, rotation for the moments being equal to zero for the net moment being equal to zero and this is actually derived from the boundary condition which is related to displacement and the specific boundary condition that we refer to was that v of l is equal to zero so this actually started off it looked like um, a you know three unknowns and two equations but in reality this was a five equations and five unknowns problem right so the unknowns were mr r1 r2 and the two integration constants c1 and c2 and the equations were sum of forces in the y direction is zero sum of moments is equal to zero and then we had the three boundary conditions v of zero is zero v prime of zero is zero and v of l is zero so we've already used up two of those equations uh, to find the integration constant. So now we're left with three and three, which means that theoretically this should be solvable. So if we start uh, with the top equation, we have MR is equal to minus R1 L over three, which we can then substitute here. So that bottom equation becomes R to L and is gonna be minus minus this so plus r1 l over 3 and that's 2 f l so now we can cancel out the l's which is going to leave us with r2 plus r1 over 3 is equal to 2 times f so we've got two equations and two unknowns now so we have r2 actually let's write it uh, starting with r1 we have r1 over 3 plus r2 is equal to 2f and then we have the other equation which is this so r1 plus r2 is equal to f so now we subtract so i'm going to do the second equation minus the top one so that's going to be r1 minus r1 over 3 the R2s cancel out, and that's going to be equal to F uh, minus 2F, which is minus F. So 2R1 over 3 is equal to minus F, which means that R1 is minus 3 over 2F. And that's the first reaction. That's the reaction here at the fixed support, right? That's R1, which we just found out. So the reason why r1 has a minus is because its real direction is opposite what we assumed right so in reality r1 is acting downwards which means that r2 has to be acting upwards and we're going to confirm this in a second so uh, from this equation here we have that r2 is f minus r1 which is f minus minus 3 over 2 so it's plus 3 over 2 f so that's going to be 5 over 2f and that's positive which means that our assumption that r2 was upwards is indeed correct so we found r1 we found r2 the only thing left to do is to find the bending moment at the root so that's mr which is this so minus r1 l over r so it's minus r1 l over r so it's minus r1 is minus 3 over 2f so minus 3 over 2f l over 3 this is turns into a plus and we cancel all the threes so we get the bending moment is one half f l that's the the reactive moment and then r1 is minus 3 over 2f and R2 is 5 over 12. Those are the reaction forces, and that's the end of the question.